So one of our, uh, something that nature would like to do is form conjugated systems. Okay, so that's why he wants to take away the OH list, right. so we can have yeah. okay. This was not conjugated. But when the hydroxide leaves, that allows us to make the conjugated system. So that's the driving force that explains why we're able to use uh, get a hydroxide leaving group over here. So we don't want to just have hydroxide leaving groups willy-nilly. There has to be a reason for it. And the reason here is to form this conjugated system. So that's something we'll want to uh, watch out for. OK, um, now the next very important thing to do is we need to be able to draw the product of the aldol condensation without going through the whole mechanism. Because in many cases, that would take way too much time, and it's not useful for synthesis. So you have to think about these in terms of categories. And here again is where it's really useful to, lay, to use the asterisks and the alpha carbon. Um, and you have to think about which of the categories you're in. So notice that in this product, you need to show that the alpha carbon has attacked the former carbonyl carbon, and the carbonyl oxygen is turned into hydroxide. hydroxy. That would be this case here. Now in this picture, who's the nucleophilic atom? The ketone, the enolate. The alpha carbon from the enolate. Yeah. The nucleophilic atom here would be the alpha carbon from the enolate. And who's the nucleophilic atom here? The alpha carbon from the enolate. Um, so if you follow these patterns, that makes it a lot easier to actually draw the product without going through this whole complicated mechanism. So let's do an example of that. So let's see if we can draw the product here without doing the mechanism. And again, putting in the, the asterisks and the alpha might help us here. Without the mechanism? Yeah, because we just practiced the mechanism a couple times. But it's also important to be able to draw the product without going through the whole mechanism. Because you might be doing some problems where you have to have, do two or three alcohol condensations in the same problem, and you wouldn't want to do the mechanism every single time. Again, putting in the alpha and asterisk labels might help us, and trying to follow along with the category one or category three patterns might help us. Remember, we're doing uh, cold conditions. Is this supposed to be a double bond or not? No. Okay, good. That's a single bond and then... Good. That's good. Putting in the alpha symbol and the asterisk might help you to think about that more clearly. Good. And where would the asterisks go? Okay. Now I think you've got it worked out. So for me, the best way to start with is I'm going to start by showing the two separate aldehydes that are going to be interacting. Here's the one with the nucleophilic alpha carbon, and here's the one with the carbonyl. Uh, and then following along with this pattern over here, yeah, we can kind of use a redraw and modify technique. So here's the carbonyl carbon that's going to get attacked. And we have to make sure we're not dropping or losing any carbons. The carbonyl carbon is connected to two more carbons. And now we're going to be doing this category here, because there's cold conditions. So we should have the hydroxy group. After a single nucleophilic attack, the carbonyl oxygen turns into a hydroxy group. And then who's this nucleophile going to be over here? The alpha carbon. This is the trickiest part right here. Here's the alpha carbon. And who's the alpha carbon connected to? 
Well, on one side, it's connected to a methyl group. And on the other side, it's connected to an aldehyde. Notice that this carbonyl has not participated in the reaction at all. This carbonyl is just along for the ride. The carbonyl next to this alpha carbon is just along for the ride. It's not changing at all. So going one step at a time, it's perfectly possible to get the right product here without going through the whole mechanism. And again, trying to follow this pattern here, I think, makes it clear what's going on. Again, the confusing thing is just that the nucleophile is kind of complicated over here. And if it was hot, you would just erase the OH and add a double bond. Let's do that. Let's draw what the product is under heat. But that sounded good. This is a hydrogen. This over here is a hydrogen. At this point, we don't necessarily even have to keep drawing the hydrogen anymore because this is not an aldehyde anymore. You can just treat this like a hidden hydrogen. So now, under heat, we should be doing a category three reaction. Now the carbonyl oxygen has been completely blasted off. If you want to, you can show that it's left as hydroxide. The carbonyl oxygen is completely left. But this is still the former carbonyl carbon, so I'm still going to asterisk this. Here's our alpha carbon, and who's the alpha carbon connected to? Well, on one side, it's connected to a methyl group, and on the other side, it's connected to an aldehyde. So again, you want to be very careful not to add or drop carbons. If this was more complicated, maybe we should also use numbers to make sure that we're not adding or dropping any carbons. We could use separate numbers for these two compounds over here. And maybe at this point, we can go ahead and just erase these hidden hydrogens, because we don't usually show hidden hydrogens on, uh, since it's not an aldehyde or a ketone anymore. That's just a matter of taste, whether you keep showing that hidden hydrogen or not. So you need to keep practicing the aldol reaction until you can do it both with the mechanism, but also without the mechanism. And I really think, again, that putting in the asterisk and the alpha symbol helps us to keep our bearings when we're doing this. And when we follow the patterns, that might help as well. You also have to be able to do the retroaldol condensation. You should also be able to do the retroaldol condensation with the mechanism or without the mechanism. And again, putting in the alpha and the asterisk can be very helpful in those cases. Maybe that would be the most important thing for us to do right now. So. Yeah, I'll do this. I don't really have time to talk too much about retro. So. Yeah, we can do retro. So let's try this instead. Okay. Um, it's up to you. Uh, if you want, you can just try drawing the, uh, the product, or if you want, you can do the mechanism. Would it be intramolecular? Yeah, that's good. Uh, your choice. If you want, uh, you can just draw the product if you think you can do that, or if you want, you can go through the whole mechanism, whichever is easier for you. Now, I think what you've shown happening here is this. Now, which proton is the base supposed to take? Who's it supposed to take the proton from? The alpha carbon. That's right. But this is the carbonyl. Right. 
this is that aldehyde hydrogen. I think we mentioned that this is a, a common trap that can be fallen into. Um, the aldehyde hydrogen generally doesn't do anything interesting. It's not the aldehyde hydrogen that's acidic, it's the alpha hydrogen. So that would be a mistake. Let's see, I'll take a different hydrogen. That's, by the way, one thing that might have helped you there is labeling the alpha carbon. That's one reason why it's always a good idea at the start to label your alpha carbon. So we'll label this as the alpha carbon. And we should also asterisk the carbonyl carbon that's going to be the electrophile. But it's not this carbon that's going to be the electrophile. So I'm not going to put the asterisk on this carbonyl carbon over here. I'm going to put the asterisk on the carbonyl carbon and oxygen on the left. Because we wouldn't expect this alpha carbon to attack its own carbonyl. You want it to attack the other carbonyl. 